Hey Sal, when was the last time Fog Entertainment reacted to a list about The Sopranos? Well, it's here everybody, welcome back to the channel and it is the top 10 most satisfying deaths in The Sopranos according to Collider. Normally we do other websites other than Collider but the first one on Collider and it's intriguing because what the other websites and what the other people and other media outlets describe is satisfying. Well, we're going to find out, and I've got a feeling there's going to be some sneaky surprises in here. But anyway, let's go into 10th place. And we have got Adriana Liserva in long term parking, of course, in season five. I don't really know why you would describe this as satisfying. I think it's more sad than satisfying. I get it. Not everyone loves a rat, but I mean, the whole scampering away at the end. I just. Is it satisfying? Nah, it's not a satisfying death. I think I was read this articles. Ne never, 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 never a satisfying death, guys. Let's see what number nine holds. Well, you get Jackie April Jr. in Army of One. I mean, it's describing him as one of the more fascinating characters on The Sopranos. Um, what's his death? Sa I think his death fucking sucked. I'll be brutally honest about it. You know, he's on the run, he did the poker game hit, he's on the run, he's hiding with Omar for the wire. He, he's then walking down, every day when you're walking down the street, and big fat Pluto bouncing like a fucking donut behind him. Just whips his gun out, shoots him in the back of the head, and then the tamest, shittest fall into like a big, was it leaves or snow? It was, it was like a big bloody pile of something. But you know what, the death felt like me, big pile of shite. Anyway. Oh... Big Bacalia in the blue comet. This one. This one. Yeah, you know. Again. How is this? How? I mean, they say it's satisfying because he ultimately served no greater purpose in the story. It needed to be killed in order to escalate the stakes. I I'm going to disagree, did he? You know, looking at the way it played out. I think he could have lived. I mean, does it would it take away from the episode? Yeah, but one of the good guys. I, I don't think it was satisfying. I don't. Um, number seven. I'll do respect. Big Tony B. Again, this one now. You know, killing him took a weight off everyone's shoulders, but it's like Phil wanted him on a silver platter. That wouldn't have been satisfying. But was getting wiped out the way he got wiped out more satisfying? I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Um, Johnny Sack, stage five. Again, I just, I just do not under. I just don't understand this gimmick here. So Collider says. Considering that Tony is forced to be humbled by Ferris events for the final stretch of the episode, seeing him finally get a win by taking out one of his most hated enemies was certainly one of the show's most sa satisfying. Wait, hold on. Take out one of his own enemies? I thought I thought Tony and this guy had a good relationship. And also, he died of lung cancer. Tony didn't wipe him out. It wasn't a hit. So, I, just, I think this is just a typical news article slash website. It doesn't have a fucking clue what it's talking about. Up next, Filia Top. Made in America. I, I this death was not exciting for me. I thought the death sucked. And you know, I, I know how the mob works. I know how these hits work, right? It's not gonna be the top guy of an organization ninety nine percent of the time doing the hit. But Jesus Christ, the guy that did a hit had no fucking name on the on the main villain to end the T V show. I mean, come on. Like that's I think that's fucking unacceptable, man. Some people can say, well, that, that, that doesn't sit right with me. Definitely not. Well, up next, I think this is probably the least satisfying death of The Sopranos because you've got this character. It's pretty much the second biggest character on the show. They're driving. They crash the car. Hey, order me a taxi. I never, I never pass a drug test. And Tony's like, you know what? How about you, how about you pass the finger test? And he fucking just grabs his nose and that's it. Absolute fucking shite. I'm sorry. If you think this death's satisfying, I've got a question. You've got to question your loyalty. Up next, we've got Sal Bombancero in Funhouse. 
again. I would say this was like a satisfying death because like they finally find out about it. I would probably say this is like the only satisfying death so far on this list. I've got no complaints with this being on the list. Richie April. Right. I think everyone was waiting for Richie to be like finally dealt with by Tony, or at least a member of Tony's crew. When Janice shot him, I remember watching it for the first I was fucking shocked, but also I don't think it's satisfying, I think it's a letdown. I think it just de-escalates a fucking situation. And I get it, not everything in real life happens that way. Some things do get de-escalated, or some things spiral out of control because of a s silly little thing. But, you know, it's a TV show at the end of the day. I get what we want. We wanted to make it real as possible. I real as possible. What about Tony talking to fucking fish? But it was a dream. Load of shit. Anyway, this wasn't satisfying. Number one, Ralph set for Eto. Yo, a lot of people hated Ralph because he was like purely evil. Was the guy really that evil? I mean, was he more evil than Tony? I mean, probably fucking not, but we all have a uh, selective memories. But when he got killed, I didn't think it was satisfying. I was like, holy fuck, look at this fight to the death here between Ralph and Tony sort of thing. I enjoyed the death, but I can't say I was satisfied. And am I satisfied by this list? No, I mean, honestly, I, I, one out of the ten deaths I've put down as satisfying. 